Um, I don't even know how to start this one. Uh, first of all, uh, shout out to the Girl Scouts. Saw the video they posted. Absolutely fantastic. Um, and I just want to kind of throw a little praise to all our scouting organizations, the Boy Scouts, the Cub Scouts, and the Girl Scouts, who all meet down here at home. They do a fantastic job um, molding and shaping uh, the kids. It's Thursday. Um, I've been down here for a while, and I really, really needed this time. I think all of us are trying to wrap our mind around what happened yesterday and last night and try to figure out what it looks like to <clears throat> to be mature and responsible in how we process it. So let me give you a heads up. This is going to be a little long. It's going to be kind of rambling. Um, I'm going to reveal kind of a personal part of my spiritual journey um, that has just been setting on my mind ever since yesterday and last night. Uh, early into my full-time ministry, I'd only been at this church um, a few years, traditional Baptist church, everyone wore suits, you know, the whole pop and circumstance. There's still a lot of those around doing great things. Um, but early on, I began to feel this unsettled thing inside of me that kind of sprang up out of nowhere. I, I see it now as the, the Holy Spirit kind of doing a work in me. And what this unsettledness was, the realization that we were doing a great job doing the church things. I wasn't sure we were connecting with people. And I didn't have words to describe what I was feeling, and I didn't know exactly what was, ha what was happening. But I knew that I couldn't keep going the same way that everyone else was. And so I tried to find ways to, to put those feelings into actions or, or to find words to, to, to match what was going on inside of me. And so like the first thing I did was stupid. I was young and really immature is I stopped wearing a suit. Um, and I just started wearing more casual clothes because I would look out in the congregation and very few people were wearing suits. And I just felt like we were way, we were far apart from them. There was so much distance. And I got some criticism and people said things, but I didn't care. I knew I had to chase this thing inside of me. And I was doing things in, in the youth ministry. I was a youth minister at the time that I, I felt like we're connecting with people um, at a real deep level. And then, I heard of this church, um, and the church will go unnamed. I began to hear things coming from this church that they had found methods and ways of worship that were way different than what everyone else was doing. They were seeing tremendous impact. People were responding, um, but it really hadn't got out a whole lot. I just was hearing it through the minister grapevine. Um, and so the pastor of this church was going around to different areas of the country just trying to talk about what was happening in his church and what an impact it was making. And so I drug one of our staff members to Birmingham from Knoxville and said, you've got to listen to this guy. I think he's got it. He's saying things that I feel and, and that I think are describing what I've been wrestling with for a long time. And he's finding ways to put them to words. So I drug this, tr I love this guy on staff, drug him with me um, to hear this man speak. And I was enraptured. It was the first time I'd ever seen him in person. Um, and I just sat at his feet and listened to him talk about what he believed in him and what he thought was important and, and how church should look. And I'm not sure my co-minister felt the same way that I did. He was impressed, but I don't think he felt that same thing that I felt. I had fallen hard for what this pastor was doing and what he was doing at his church. Um, so much so that when this church started doing conferences and workshops about how to do what they were doing, 
man, I was there on a plane, rental car, um, drive onto their campus. And I remember the very first time I went to one of the conferences, it was a, what does church look like conference? And I sat in the ginormous auditorium um, and I, I watched skits and I heard music that you don't normally hear in church. And I listened to this man speak and other people speak. And I am not kidding. I openly wept. I was by myself. I sat in the dark in this ginormous auditorium and I just wept <laughs> uncontrollably because I finally felt that there was someone who got what I was feeling and was doing what I thought should be done. This is going to date me. If, if you remember the blind melon song, No Rain, the video of the little girl in the bumblebee outfit, and she was ostracized and no one would welcome her in and she went from place to place to place and no one would accept her and so she's out on the street and she finds this giant field behind this wrought iron gate and she goes through the gate and there's all these other people dressed up in bumblebee outfits and you can just feel this connection between her and all those people she finally found her people that's how I felt and so even though I was still working in this traditional Baptist church I was beginning to really connect with this, this other church. And I, I would go to several of their conferences, so many, and I would drag staff people from the church I was in, the same church where I was the youth minister, to this church. I'd go like, look what they're doing. Hear what they're saying. Um, and it, there got to a point after I'd been there about three or four times that when I would go to one of their conferences, I, I would step onto campus and I would just feel home. It was very familiar. I had been there so many times. I love the city. Um, I would take a group of people from my church to um, the conference. And this is how, how bad I was and how deep I was into what this church was doing. That when my family vacationed, uh, we went to this big famous amusement park, Cedar Point um, in Ohio. And then we're driving to Chicago. I drug my poor family on our vacation to this church to attend their prayer service um, during the week. In fact, I was so deep into it that one of the other pastors that I heard speak at this church who is on, on the West Coast, when we did a family vacation to California, I drug my family to his church for a Sunday morning worship service. Um, I was in, and I was in deep. I loved what they were doing. I was incorporating some of their stuff into my worship. I was seeing the same kind of res results and responses. Um, but, but something happened. I started to hear a little rumbling from this church that things weren't quite right. There were high level, really important people either on staff or who were working at big organizations who were high level in that church that were leaving. And they were saying a few things about things weren't right at the church. Uh, but nothing big was coming out. Um, because I was so into this church and what they were doing, and I so believed in, in their values and their message that I just kind of ignored those little warning signs. I can't be true. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and, and I kept going and, and kept incorporating what they were doing into, into what I was doing. Um, I, I eventually left that church, went to another church, was still incorporating um, the elements of, of this church and the leadership and what was going on into, into what I was doing. And I kept hearing more and more things. Now that I look back, I'm like, man, I should have, I should have picked up on that. I should have caught that. Well, how did I miss that? This place that I've stepped on their campus a lot of times, drug my family to this place. Um, how, how was I missing these things that weren't right that I just kind of overlooked? Um, when, when everything ended at my previous church before here, and I was applying at different churches and interviewing, um, there was this connection with New Community Church that felt um, 
deep and it felt familiar. And I really couldn't put my finger on it. And so the process was going pretty far and Janet and I made a secret trip from Tullahoma to LaGrange. Um, and when we drove down South Davis in front of the church, um, I, I recognized <laughs> that church that I was connected with. Um, and, I, and, I, and I had this thing that happened in, inside of me that went, I, oh my God, these people are like me. And so I talked with, you know, the interviewing people and elders and all that stuff. And I went, they have been on the same spiritual journey that I have. They, they have been to this church too. They understand we get each other. I, I was just beside myself. And so I knew that New Community Church, and I still know that this, this is where I'm supposed to be because we traveled the same parallel road um, without knowing it. A few years ago, a f more and more things came out about this church, like awful, awful things. And, and more than just the lead pastor. Um, and I was pushed to a point where I had to make a personal decision. And I was in conversation with a couple of other people who had had the same relationship with that church. And they're like, we still believe in the values. We still believe in that church, what that church does. We still think they're an amazing place. But what do we do with our connection to that specific church? Like, I, I don't think I can keep doing this. And I don't know what it looks like to separate myself because it feels like I'm going to let go of all the things that I think are important and all the values that I have. Um, and people were falling out at different places along the way. I began to detach myself from the church because I, I realized that as much as I didn't want to believe that some of the things that were being said and some of the things that I chose to ignore and some of the things I, I refused to accept were probably true. Um, I saw a wholesale implosion at that church. That those who did leave, who disconnected themselves, were kind of able to salvage their values and beliefs because they didn't connect them to that church. But there were huge swaths of people in that church, like important people like staff and elders, who just um, who just got sucked down with the sinking ship. Um, and that was just a couple of years ago. Um, and I am heartbroken. That church meant everything to me. I am who I am today because of that church, but I can no longer connect myself with that church. I, I'm pretty sure they're trying to, to write things, to trying to fix things. They, they cleaned out all the elders, all the staff, <coughs> everyone who was connected to um, the darker side of that church has been moved out. Um, and, and I'm at a point now, I don't, I don't know what to do with my relationship with that church. I still think the things that they were about, I think, I still think the things that they did were important and they mattered and they made a difference. And, and people in churches all over the, the country and the world are better places because of this church. Um, but I know that they're not connected to the church anymore. Um, I know you're, you know why I'm telling this story. And, and it's, all of the events are timely with the series that we've, we've been trying to do in worship, and that's how to deal with division within the church when, when everyone has really strong, passionate beliefs that, that seem to clash. And Paul addresses it perfectly. And what he says is the danger of putting yourself in a particular camp 
following a person rather than the values of Christ. The, the church I was connected with had all the values of Christ. They said all the right things. And I'm not saying they're not, that they're wrong now because of what happened. They're still the right things. I, I erred by um, hitching what I thought were important Christ-like values and beliefs to a person. And I have learned that I need to have those values and those beliefs and those things that I hold as true without claiming to be a whatever person. Um, that I can't be a, and I'm not going to use the name of the church, a that named church person, even though I use some of the stuff that they did. I think that's why Paul in 1 Corinthians said, you can't, don't say that you follow Apollos or that you follow Paul or you follow Peter or you even try to spiritualize it and say that you follow Christ. Um, and, and, and I've learned that linking yourself to a particular person who represents things that you think are important um, is really dangerous. So, the lesson this morning that's way more obvious um, than I probably intended it to be is that there, there's no shame along the way to go to say, I was wrong. <laughs> I thought this church was something different. I, I still hold to the values and, and the principles of what that ch church stood for. So there's no shame in admitting that. At any point going, wow, I was all in. I drank the Kool-Aid. I fully bought into it. I believed it. And I, I have to come to a point and say, um, I missed some things that, that other people saw that were obvious. And, and as I said just before, there's no shame in admitting that at all. I think that's how life works. However, and I firmly believe this because I saw this happen at that church. Yes, there is no shame in admitting that, that I was wrong. But there is judgment for not admitting I was wrong.